friends, my name is Dr. Arul Vega. I am a practicing nephrologist and I wanted to bring a few tips and points regarding the novel coronavirus that we are all being hit with as a pandemic. Late in 2019, the novel coronavirus was identified as an outbreak of acute respiratory illness in Wuhan, China. Currently, there are more than 2 million confirmed cases and this is currently a public health emergency and characterized as a pandemic in March of 2020. When should we consider the possibility of COVID-19? It's mostly in people who have fever, respiratory tract symptoms, and who have traveled to areas and communities who have had recent close contact with confirmed cases for the COVID-19. There is limited testing capacity this precludes testing all the patients with suspected infection, prioritizing mostly hospitalized, elderly, symptomatic patients with severe disease. Currently, we are still working on a microbiological diagnosis to make a positive PCR test for SARS-CoV-2. The, the nasopharyngeal swab is the preferred test specimen. Because of limited testing capacity and concern for a lot of false negative tests, the diagnosis is largely presumptive and mostly consistent on the clinical basis. When we suspect patients with coronavirus or COVID-19, typically there is many, many steps that we take care in the healthcare setting. Public officials are always notified. The CDC is made aware of this and they recommend for their guidelines that each patient who is positive for COVID-19 has their own single occupancy room and all patients and visitors are then given gloves, gowns, eye protection and a respirator which is a medical mask or an alternative. Management for this disease is still very very unknown mostly consisting of supportive care. A lot of investigative approaches are now being made um, to help fight this disease. The important thing that I want you guys to take away from my message is how do we reduce the risk of transmission in the community. The most important thing that I would stress on is good hand diligent hygiene. Practicing respiratory hygiene also is absolutely essential. Covering your mouth, covering your cough, and avoiding crowds and close contact with ill individuals if possible is the way that we can stop the spread of this disease. Social distancing, as I'm sure all of you have already heard of, is helping prevent the transmission community-wise for this disease. In some settings now, in the public places, CDC is recommending face covering uh, in all public places. Guidelines are evolving and things are changing as we speak day by day. I would also emphasize on a few following general measures in recommendations to reducing the transmission of the infection. I talked a little bit briefly about diligent hand washing, particularly for people to make sure that they wash their hands after touching surfaces in public. Use of hand sanitizer is essential. Has to contain at least 60% alcohol which is a reasonable alternative to just plain simple hand washing with soap. I talked about respiratory hygiene, covering your cough and sneeze is absolutely essential. Kindly avoid touching your face, particularly around the eyes, the nose and the mouth. The American Academy of Ophthalmology suggests that people don't wear contact lenses as well because this can make them touch their eyes more frequently and increase the spread of this disease. Cleaning and disinfecting objects and surfaces that are frequently touched. The CDC has its guidelines and I will post that in a separate link later on if need be. And what are the EPA registered products that we need to use is what I can talk about separately as well. At this point of time, the CDC is updating its recommendations as of early April and advising everybody to wear a cloth face covering. Even a homemade mask or a bandana would work in a public setting whilst if social distancing is difficult to achieve in the community. The most important thing for people who are caring for patients with suspected or documented COVID-19 at home 
is that they should wear a face cover when in the same room with these people. If the patient cannot wear a face cover, you should wear it if you are coming in close contact with these people. People, individuals who have developed acute respiratory illness, that is a fever, a cough, a lower respiratory tract infection, should be encouraged to self-isolate and wear a protective face covering as well. If their symptoms get worse, their fever is not resolving, despite over-the-counter products like estaminophen or ibuprofen, then we highly recommend that they talk to their primary care physician and see if further workup with the chest x-ray needs to be done to make sure that there is no pneumonia that is brewing. Efficacy of masks in containing coronavirus is still uncertain, but has been proven in different countries, and we are still looking at the numbers to see what best we can do. Managing asymptomatic non-healthcare workers with potential exposure is also very, very important. Staying at home, maintaining six feet or two meters distance from others when you leave home is the key. Uh, the most important thing, like we say, is self-quarantine. If you don't need to go out there, please do not. Stay at home at least for 14 days. That is the incubation period of this, of this, of this virus. Twice daily, please check your temperature if you think you have been exposed. Monitor for cough, monitor for shortness of breath, monitor for fever. And like I said already, please talk to your primary care physician or a person with medical knowledge to see if you need to be tested and then take it from there. I do hope that this informative video was helpful for you. And you can ask me any questions. Should you have any concerns, uh, I will be available on Facebook as well. Thank you and have a good day.